All right, what is going on, guys? Till Twins coming at you with part one of answering your questions. Yes. Uh, I'm going to say this right here right now. We're going to try to make this short as possible, about 30, 35, 40 minutes. Uh, as you guys know, we have a reputation for making these type of videos long as heck, almost movie length. So we're going to try to make this at least 30 minutes, maybe a little overboard, but uh, let's just get right into the, to the questions. Uh, we're going to open up with Josh K from the UK. Okay, now this one's going to be interesting because um, he said, I couldn't think of a good question, so here's some common British slang phrases, and I want to see if you can work out what they mean. Okay. Okay. He says, his first one is, if I describe something as bog standard, what would my opinion be of it? Bog standard. Bog standard. What's bog? Is that good? I don't know. Bog. I, I'm drawing a blank, dude. I, I, I actually have no idea. Bog standard. I'm trying to get my Harry Potter. Yeah. In if, there if I describe and some, see, you know, some of their terms. Yeah. If I describe something as bog standard, what would my opinion be of it? I actually have no clue, dude. I, I'm, I have nothing. To really answer, I'm for. just gonna I'm I'm gonna go with the generic good. Okay. See, see, all right. See, see where that lands me. All right. Now the second one is, if I put something in my boot, where would I be putting it? Okay. Um, j- j- just for appropriate reasons, I think uh, you you already know the the answer. I think. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna go with his answer. Yes, we just are, to be appropriate. We, yeah. And yes, we are dirty minded. You know. Yes. Whack jobs. Yes. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> if I took a brawly outside of me, what would I use it for? A okay, brawly? A brawly. Hold on. I, did I hear brawly before? It sounds similar to brawly, huh. broom. Is it broom? Brawly. Hold on. If I took a brawly outside of me, what would I use it for? Brawly. Hold on. Why are you taking a broom outside? Sweep. Sweep the deck. Sweep the porch. Sweep the sidewalk. Why would you sweep the sidewalk? Who sweeps the sidewalk? That's what leaf blowers are for. Um, I took a brawly. Umbrella. Umbrella brawly. I was going. I was going to say bike, but that's trolley. Right. Um. I'm gonna go. What um, is, is is bike trolley? I can't. I don't know. I'm gonna go umbrella. Okay. I'm gonna go umbrella because umbrella brawly kind of fits. I think it might be broom, but. I don't know. I'm going to say broom. Okay. I really don't know. If, if I describe something as the dog's bollocks, what would my opinion be of it? The dog's bollocks. Uh, first of all, I've heard of bollocks before. What does bollocks mean? Bollocks. The, o- the only time I can think of bollocks is that movie Dodgeball where the pirate is about to face the the, the, Girl, the Scouts. Girl Scouts. Yeah, great great movie by the way. Um, um, hold on, he said bollocks. Do you mean balls? I see it. The or, dog's or, bollocks. What would be my opinion of it? I, I honestly have no idea. Again, I'm drawing another blank. I have no idea. Dog's bollocks. What would be my opinion of it? Dog's bollocks. I don't know. I, I I'm lost. Yeah, so am I, man. Shit. This is hard. Yes. <laughs> Remember, these are British slang phrases. And this is one of the reasons why I like to go to the United Kingdom, you know, at least once in my life, so I can understand what these slangs yeah. mean. So I can understand your language. Right. Um, Maybe bring it into America and they'd be like, what the hell are you talking about? Right. <laughs> Just imagine us, you know, yelling at people or boxes in the trucks. That'd be hilarious. Um, but uh, the supervisor would get so confused. It'd be so <laughs> funny. Uh, miffed and shift. Chuffed? I think it's chuffed. Yeah, miffed and chuffed are both emotions, but which one is good and which one is bad? Um, See, it's a 50-50 thing here. Yeah. Miffed, chuffed. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say chuffed is good and miffed is bad. I think it's like a switcheroo thing here where miffed may be first, but in fact is actually chuffed. That's good. And miffed is bad, so that's my answer there. I don't understand your logic, but I'm going to go with it. I don't know. I'm gonna go with it. And this last one is 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 just quite hilarious. Uh, I'm just gonna say it. If I went for a fag, 
<laughs> no homophobe. No, no. In there. What would I be doing? If I went for a fag, what would I be doing? Okay, now hold on. I, I, I remember hearing this in a British term. I think it was Family Guy. I, th- I think, because you know how they portray British characters and British voices. Yeah. So, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Have a whole carton of fags. Cigarettes. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Okay, I'm going to go. Okay, fag is cigarettes. Thank you, Family Smoking. Guy. Smoking. There yes. you go. Okay, Please okay. tell me we're right, Josh K. Yes. <laughs> he said, good luck. I'm excited to see if you are able to get these and what some of your guesses will be. Laughing, crying emoji. Let us know in the comments, man. I'm going to be yes. incredibly excited to see what some of these mean, if we were correct, if we were wrong. I think I know th- the last one is, is correct, just based on Peter Griffin uh, and, and, and when he was yelling at his son Chris when they were in that British episode. Yeah. All right, uh, next question comes from Ryan Irwin Dial. I believe I believe I pronounced that correctly. If I did not, I apologize. As for future reference, we apologize if we... Pronounce any of these names incorrectly. You guys know we are just horrible with names. Mm -hmm. We have a reputation for it. There are rumors of Sam Darnold coming to Pittsburgh next season to back up Ben until he retires. How would you feel about that? I would be absolutely up for that. I would love that. I adore that idea. I would even adore it more if it came true. I think it's a little too early to even be talking about Sam Darnold coming to Pittsburgh because we already have a goal in mind. Mm -hmm. This is something to talk about during the offseason. And when that time comes, we can definitely be more open to it. But of course. just looking at it and an aspect of it possibly happening, I'd gladly trade for Darnold, man. Because the, the the Jets are horrible. Darnold is being dealt with a, a horrible uh, hand in there. Mm-hmm. In with New Adam York. Gaze, he has no number one. His offensive line sucks. His running his, game is just... Exactly. Yeah. He literally has nothing, but he's actually making a lot of flashes with the Jets. That's yeah. just going to show the... Hard and determination that Bradford, not Bradford, Bradford. Whoa! <laughs> not no, no, no. Sam, I'm sorry. Sam Donald has. I'm sorry. I don't think he's anywhere near Bradford no, whatsoever. No. But um, I'd be up for it, you know. And with him being the backup, it gives Mason Rudolph some competition. Right. Because right now he doesn't have any. So I'd be up for it, but I'd gladly be up for it. But whether it happens, I, I'm not sure. But because yeah. we know Ben's saying he's not done, Steelers might want to extend him. So I don't know. Yeah. I well, don't know exactly what happens with the quarterback quarterback position in the future. Yeah, but we'll see. Adam M., this is a great question. Top five worst and or least favorite Steelers of all time. Mm, that's, all right. a, that's a good-ass question. Least I, favorite, I'm going to start with that. Least favorite, Mike Mitchell. My, yeah, Mike Mitchell, Antoine Blake, and this is in no particular order. Mike Mitchell, Antoine Blake, Jarvis Jones. Um, God, Jarvis Jones sucked. Uh, Troll Emmons. <laughs> okay, that's fair. As of now. And uh, I'm probably going to say Artie Burns as the last okay. one. Okay. Uh, Mike Mitchell. Rashard Mendenhall. Okay. Fumble Fitz. Gerald Toussaint. Um, fuck it. Dante Moncrief. He sucked. Oh, did he ever? Concrete hands. Uh, Oh, and Neil O'Donnell. Don't forget mm. Neil O'Donnell. That should clearly cost us that Super Bowl thirty game. Oh, yeah. And worst Steelers of all time? Not Mark Malone, Bubby Brister, Ziggy Hood, arguably. Lima Sweet, no doubt. Jarvis Jones. Uh, San Qu- uh, can you put San Quiz going uh, there? No, you definitely can put. Uh, yes, he never played, but that's a thing. Uh, he never played. Ever. So, can, I, I mean, can you put him up there? But You could, but you couldn't. I don't know. I think you could because he was a... A second round selection, which we never should have taken. No, for a nickel you don't corner. Take a, yeah, exactly. No, like yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, good question. Yeah. So on to the next one is from Steelers Lane. He asks, "Who do you consider to be our worst rival team? Uh, the Bengals currently right now, but in, in in the long run, definitely the Browns. I'd probably have to agree with them. Well, it was the Browns for the longest time. It won't be too much longer that they go back to that role. Yeah, exactly. Believe me." It's going to happen. Yes, it is. The Browns are the Browns. Yes. So on to the next question. comes from Terrible Tau Highlights. He has a couple questions, five exactly. He asks, who's your favorite Steelers player or players of all time? I'm just going to go player here because if, if, if we say players, we'll be here all night. Yeah. Uh, Heinz Ward. Mine is Troy Palomalo. Yes. Do you think we are going to draft a quarterback this year and who? See, I don't know. I don't know exactly what they're going to do with the quarterback position. 
it, it could depend if we win the Super Bowl. If Ben wins it and hangs it up after that, there's no better way to go out for a guy like Ben. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly don't know the exact answer to that, but if there's someone that we could draft, Trey Lance. Yeah, I, definitely course, Trey Lance. Of course, I love Trevor Lawrence or Justin Fields, but though, that's wishful thinking. Trey Lance is a little more realistic. Yeah, more you know reasonable to reach up for if we were to. Right. A uh, trade up, and Trey Lance is a monster. Yeah, he, North he, he really State. Is. I don't think he's thrown a uh, turnover yet. No, whatsoever. The dude's a beast. He really is. Uh, his third question is: Who are your favorite Steelers YouTube channel or channels out there? Well, definitely huge shout out to the Steel City Disciples, aka the Renegades of Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, you guys already know Steel Maiden, Steel Jackson, Steel Jedi, the Renegade Four One Two, Brune Steel, Lady Steel, Erica Steel, Mac Main Seventy, Just Blaze Four One Two. As just just. Still logic, still dictate. Yeah. There's just there's so many. I, th- I believe there are more, but if we missed you guys, we apologize. But you know who you are. You guys are fantastic Steelers fans and Steelers content creators, man. Absolutely. You guys are awesome. Definitely huge shout out to those guys. Definitely. Um, of course, Chisel Adonis is, is great. He's he's a great YouTuber out there. Very comedic, but a very realistic sports and Steelers fan. Mm-hmm. Uh, as well as Pittsburgh Dad. Pittsburgh Dad's classic. He's freaking hilarious, dude. He definitely really is. So definitely those guys for sure. Absolutely. Number four, how old are you guys? We are 21. 21. We're adults now. 21. Time to party. Yeah. Get out of here. By the way, I got my Fanta over here. Yeah. Fanta's the shit. <laughs> uh, and his last question is, what Steelers jerseys are you planning to get next? Great question. Uh, probably Cam Hayward because okay. I, we have yet to get a Cam Hayward, and he's already extended for the rest of his career. So Cam and Hayward for sure. I want to get a home Ben jersey. I have a color rush Ben, but I want a home Ben, maybe even a throwback Ben. Yeah. But Cam and Hayward, a home Ben, maybe a uh, – see, I don't know. What, what, what else could I – Um. A wearable Heinz Ward, because I, I do have a Heinz Ward, but it's autographed, so yeah. I'm not wearing that. Yeah. So a wearable Heinz Ward. Yeah, I actually got three uh, jerseys in mind. One is definitely TJ Watt. Believe it or not, I don't have a TJ Watt jersey, and I'm looking to get one. More so a throwback, because I love the throwback jerseys. I think they're classic, and I think they should actually be our full-time jerseys. Yes, I agree. They're just beautiful-looking jerseys. Second one is definitely Mike Webster. Arguably the best offensive lineman of all time, Iron Mike. Fucking beast. And third one is actually Ernie Holmes. I'm actually still looking to try to complete the whole steel curtain. I got Mean Joe Green, which is actually autographed, by the way. I got Elsie Greenwood and Dwight White. The only one I'm missing is obviously Ernie Holmes, but that's like finding a, a needle in a haystack. Yeah, It's, it's going to be hard to find. Yes, but it really is. I'm sure but, one day you'll grab it. Oh, yeah, that's definitely my goal, man. I yeah. want to get the whole steel curtain. Freaking definitely. classic. But great, great, great questions, man, right there. From Terrible Tell Highlights. On to the next one. Zacharia Hudkins, did you guys play football growing up? If so, what positions did you play? Unfortunately, we did not play football growing up, only street football. We we always wanted to play football. Uh, of course, Mama never signed us up because of the area. The area around here is just horrible. It's been it's it's just it's it's absolutely it's not good. No, it's it, not. It's not a good area. So in, like, in I, safe we terms, yeah. yeah, we can understand. But um, yeah, we always wanted to play football. Uh, what positions? Um. I've always would would have liked to play running back or linebacker. Usually whenever I had the ball in my hands, if I was running back, no one could, you know, take me down or stop me. You would have been a better running back just on your size. Yeah. And apparently I have a nasty uh, stiff arm. I can't stop it. I I, I have yet to find a way to stop. I know I should go low, but... Yeah, like every time I had the ball, anyone that would come near my way, I would just push them across. You got a Vance McDonald's stiff yeah. arm, bro. Seriously. Uh, I'd be a wide receiver. I, I always adored the wide receiver position. Uh, when we played street football when we were kids, which, by the way, I miss those times. Yes. Man, those were great. Being outside all day and playing ball with your boys, she was great. Oh, yeah, looking back Seriously, at guys it. guys would come around the corner. We'd get a whole team going. Sometimes it'd be like five versus five, and it'd be it would just be great. But I was notorious for having great hands. Yeah, you were a hell of a wide receiver right, right there. So, uh, I'd definitely be a wide receiver. Um, I'd be great on those deep routes, those sideline catches. I was a horrible route runner. But, um, yeah, de- definitely be a receiver if if I could play. Yeah, definitely. That's for sure. Man. North Top asked two questions. What is your favorite Steelers play and what is your least favorite? Mm, that's a good one. Favorite play? I mean, th- I mean, there's a huge selection. There's a lot. The Immaculate Reception, Troy Palomalu's pick six. I got us to Super Bowl 43. As well as James Harrison's uh, 
pick six mm-hmm. against the Cardinals as well. Holmes' catch. Uh, even Antonio Brown's immaculate extension versus the Ravens on Christmas Day. That shit was great. Oh, yeah, man. So, I mean, there's just so many. But I think I'm going to go with uh, Troy's uh, pick six that got the Super Bowl. I'll go with Harrison's pick six at in the Super Bowl, Yeah, to be real with you. Just iconic plays, man. Least favorite? Um, That's tough. Uh, I mean, as of now, definitely Randy Fickner's freaking Wildcats. <laughs> I'm being completely honest. You put Samuels on there, dude, you're going to fail. You really are. Least uh, favorite? But, but no, seriously, least favorite is... um Probably the Tebow play. If I'm gonna be that real the defense you. allowed, yes, I probably have to agree. That was so bad. So I remember watching that live with my older brother. That shit was horrible. Oh, dude. <laughs> he turned that TV off, man, played video games all night. I don't think he said another word that night. He didn't. He turned I that think- shit off as soon as he crossed that goal line. Turned that shit off. Such a disappointment. Never man. forget it. I believe we were number one D that year too. Mm-hmm. So disappointing. His his uh, second question is: What Steelers game made you the happiest? Which one made you the maddest? The maddest arguably could be the Tebow game, mm-hmm. or even the championship game in 2016 against the Patriots. The game that made us the happiest. Super Bowl 43. I know that's cliche and yeah, and but it's tell. the Super Bowl. You know, you won the Super Bowl. You won the big game. Yeah. So that's probably you know the one for me. You know, we won the Super Bowl number six. Yeah, for sure. Next question comes from The Fiend. Yowie wowie. There you go, man. <laughs> uh, he has 10 questions. What are your thoughts on the Roman Reigns heel stuff? Uh, well, first things first, no lie. We haven't even watched WWE in, in, in a while. Or at least we don't keep track of it as much as we used to. We mm-hmm. haven't watched SmackDown specifically in like five months. It, the product has just gone really, really terrible. No. I mean, it's been that well, way. It has, for, yeah. It's been that way for a while, but lately it's just been so bad to a point. We'll catch up on Twitter and everything, but we will not watch the recording or or it live whatsoever. No, uh, we'll ch- we're looking with the pay per views here and there, but that's mm-hmm. it. But um, as for the Roman heel stuff, we have kept a close eye on that because that's something that everyone's been wanting ever since the Shield broke up, when Rollins turned on Ambrose, aka Moxley, mm-hmm. and and Reigns. Man, everyone wanted Reigns to turn heel for the longest time. And it finally happened, and they paired him up with Paul Heyman. I mean, it's a little late, but you know, it's 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 still great. Yeah. And Reigns looks and feels natural. He comes off natural. His promos come off natural. Mm-hmm. Reigns was meant for this. That's so, what he should have done initially, instead of being a babyface for so many years. Yeah. So I'm liking the Reigns stuff. Seriously. Oh yeah, absolutely. Should the Fiend win the title back from Roman? As we as odd as it sounds, no. Uh, well, first of all, I don't think he's going to win it back. If I do think Roman will face the Fiend, but I think Roman is ultimately going to win. I really do. Honestly, as he should. And I love the Fiend. I love the character. I love how Bray has just transformed his career. But Reigns is the top heel right now, and they got to give that to a, a like a a, a a bigger baby face. You know? Yeah, like a create a new star of some sort. Yeah, the fiend can get traded to Raw or something and transfer his his career there. Yeah, there you go. Have you seen The Conjuring Two? Yes, great movie, fantastic movie, man. Love that movie. What's your thoughts on Cody coming back on AEW? That was great when 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 uh when uh Brody Lee retained the title. I forget who he faced. I think it was Orange Cassidy, mm-hmm. who who is just incredible. And Cody came back with the black hair. He looked like the freaking villain from Lazy Town. I'm not sure how many of you guys watched Lazy Town when you were a kid. Remember that freaking villain with the slick black hair and the weird facial expressions? That's what Cody looked like. Immediately, I'm like, hold up. Is that the villain from Lazy Town? It's so weird because we got so used to Cody with blonde hair when he had, you know, oh, his like, natural hair for the longest time. Now he has natural hair back. It's like, wow, this is weird. Yeah. It really is, but Cody coming back on AEW is definitely a big positive. Yeah, and Cody, Cody's fantastic. Yes, he is. What's your what's your, what's your favorite thing about Michael Myers and Jason? Uh, favorite thing? A favorite moment? Um, and there's a lot. Well, he's a big Myers fan. I'm a big Jason fan. Um, for me, for Jason is definitely in part seven when he went to uh, attack the girl who's in the sleeping bag, but then she hid. So Jason grabbed the sleeping bag and swung her against the uh, tree. I yeah. thought that was an awesome kill and awesome scene there. Right. Uh, for Michael, uh, I, I don't I don't know. Um, just his silence, the, his uniqueness, his creepiness. He was the first of his kind. Mm-hmm. Something different, you know, back in the 78 when he pinned, I forget his name, to the wall. Bob. Um, let's see, what else? When he walked out the hospital. On fire, when Laurie Stroh blew the whole place up, 
Can't forget about Michael in the most recent Halloween when he actually got his mask back. Right, when he escaped the the, the, the prison bus and then got his mask and the jumpsuit and the, the whole scene where he put his mask on and it was all messed up and yeah, dirty and, and, and wrinkled. Man, yeah, that was a great moment. Yeah. Um, should, 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 yeah, should the Steelers trade Juju? I, I've always been open to getting rid of or, or trading Juju, but I doubt it's going to happen. No, I don't think it's going to happen. No, nah, the Steelers just love Juju too much, as does the fan base, and he's just good for the locker room and for the guys mm-hmm. in the receiving core. So, yep, I doubt it happens. Who will take over WWE after Vince retires? Paul Levesque, a.k.a. Triple H. It has to be Triple H, no one else. Look what he's done with NXT. Yeah. I mean, lately, NXT hasn't really been all that great. It's felt a... Now, now don't get me wrong, it's still good, but it has a main roster feel it's to it. It's better than the main roster, nonetheless. Yeah, it still is, but definitely Triple H. Remember Annabelle, yes. Uh, the first one sucked. The sequel after that one was great, though. We actually saw that in theaters. Great yeah, movie. Yeah, the, 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 the prequel. The second one, which was a prequel. That was that was great. Yeah. And we, I don't think we've seen even the, the recent one. I forget what it's called. No, well, I did. You didn't. It was all right. Should The Fiend and Alexa Bliss be traded to Raw? Yes, that's the only way they're going to find success. They've done everything on SmackDown. They faced everyone. They need to be traded to Raw for different opponents, different feuds. And it's just where The Fiend's going to find success because with Reigns as champion, he's not going to do much. No, of course not. So him going to Raw is just a perfect scenario. Yeah. And his last question is Rock versus Roman at WrestleMania 37 or Roman versus The Fiend at WrestleMania 37? Neither. We're already going to get Roman versus The Fiend very shortly here, so they shouldn't have it at WrestleMania, and I don't want to see The Rock in the ring again, unless it's no. for a promo. So yeah, If he wants to hype neither. up a match or a segment, that's fine, but him wrestling, I don't think so. And no. quite frankly, Roman doesn't need to face another uh, future no. or legend or anything like that. Plus, The Rock has his hands full with the XFL. So. Yeah, which, so I don't which, think he'll have time anyway. No. Nah. So, and plus, of course, his acting career and all that. Exactly. So, so The Rock's, you know... Although it's Hollywood and all that, it's it's just not going to work with his schedule. Right, of course. Aaron Aaron Gonzalez asks, have 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 you truly given up on Vince McDonald? Can you see Bud Dupree coming back next year? And what should we do with Connor? Mm. Uh, we haven't entirely given up on McDonald, but we do believe this is his final year because he's going to be a cap casualty. Yeah. Can you see Dupree, or can we just see can can we see Dupree coming back? No, as much as we would like him to come back, there's just no feasible way to afford him. Yeah, with all the other you know players that we would love to resign, Juju, Watt, Hilton, maybe mm-hmm. Sutton, Sutton, maybe Fueler for sure. So I mean, there's just a lot of guys. Yeah. As for Connor, uh, he can walk. He can definitely walk. We can definitely look for another running back. Yeah, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Next questions come from CJ Nice. He has four questions. Favorite Steelers player of all time, Heinz Ward. Troy Polamalu. If you could add any current NFL player to this team, who would it be and why? Great question. Mm. So what do we really need? I was going to take some thinking. Let's see, hold on. Swap Edmonds for... That would be my first fucking answer. Swap Edmonds, uh, Edmonds for Harrison Smith. I think Harrison Smith and Minka would he be. A, no, he's a free safety. I thought it was a strong safety. I might. I don't know. I no, because no. Anthony Harris. Uh, either way, Anthony Harris and Minka would be a great duo. Overall, I think George Kittle. George Kittle with Ben would be dynamic as, as yeah. I hell. mean, I mean, he's he's definitely a, a reliable tight end who can block and catch, and he's fast. And imagine him with Ben. Oh yeah, man. That's just nasty. That really just is nasty. So yeah, de- and the thing is, we could have had him. We could have had him, but instead we took Josh Dobbs. Josh Dobbs. When we know we needed tight end because Heath Miller retired. Ladarius Green had how many concussions the year before? Jesse James was never a number one, but we took Josh Dobbs. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh. Do you guys say yins? Uh, honestly, not as often as we should, honestly, to be real with you. Yeah. We say it, of course, at the end of the video, but we we, we, def- we definitely don't say it as often as we should. Yeah. And who is better at Madden? Danny. No doubt. I can't stand Madden, but he's definitely better. Yeah. Still dictate, who shout out to you, man? Who is your guys' goat is his first question. Uh, goat? Well, one, is not Tom Brady. Definitely not Tom Brady. Definitely not Tom Brady. Um, I, I'd consider Peyton Manning the goat. You know, I think he's actually got the most NFL MVPs anyway. Um, uh, Drew Brees. Uh, I'd jo- say. Uh, Joe Montana. 
Probably Joe Montana, if I'm real with you, but I'd say Peyton Manning and Drew Brees are a close second in my in my book. To me, it's it's Peyton Manning. He just had a fantastic career. Now, when his career is said and done, Patrick Mahomes. More than likely. He's only 25 years old, and he's already done this. How's that possible? It's crazy. It's really crazy. How's he's that? having the best year out of everybody. How is that possible? Patrick Mahomes, man. Who's your guys' uh, favorite player of all time? Uh, is that still his player or NFL player? Well, still his player is, of course, Heinz Ward. And Troy Paul Malo, As for said. a favorite player of all time, it's definitely between Peyton Manning, Drew Brees, or honestly, probably Larry Fitzgerald. Right. Still between those three. I'd probably have to go with Brees, though. For me, I'd probably have to go with Manning. Manning is, it was just a hell of a quarterback for both the Colts and the Broncos. Yeah. Legendary career, man. What judge are you guys looking looking to buy next? Definitely the Cameron Hayward or the or the Ben, but I I probably say Cameron Hayward most importantly. Yeah, for me most importantly is definitely T.J. Watt. I need to get that jersey. I, I know I don't know why I don't have one. I'm definitely going to get one. How do you not have a T.J. Watt jersey yet? I honestly don't know. I'm actually ashamed of myself. You should be ashamed of yourself. T.J. Fucking Watt, defensive player of the year, by the way. Should have won it last year. He's coming for it this year, motherfucker. Oh yeah, you, you he just won, he just it. won Defensive Player of the Month for September. Better watch out for him, man. Seriously, would uh, uh, are you guys down to do a collaboration video in the future? Absolutely, always oh. down to do a collaboration Hell with yeah, any man. of the disciples or renegades. Oh yeah, hell yeah, man. Absolutely. And his final question is: Next season, if COVID is long gone and fans are allowed to go, do you guys plan on going to a game or games? We'll love to see if my brother and I could catch a game with Yins. And, of course, his brother is still logic. You shout to him. Mm-hmm. The plan was to go to a game this year, of course, until COVID hit. We, 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 we plan to go to Fan Blitz or, or the Draft Party or whatever they call it. We plan to go to uh, the Hall of Fame where Troy and Kyr were going to do their speeches. Of course, that was postponed until next year. Yeah. That pissed me off. Yeah, that that really sucked. We were supposed to go to Pittsburgh for a game, I believe. Uh, possibly La Trobe. I'm not sure. We, we had a lot of shit planned, man, until this COVID bullshit hit. Yeah. But hopefully, I, I don't know if COVID's going to be long gone. I, we can only hope and pray. But if it's at least limited and we do have a, a, a reliable vaccine, then I'd love to go to a game next year. We've never been to a Steelers game and definitely love to catch up with you guys again, man. Absolutely, bro. That's I think sure. it'd be a hell of a time, man. Absolutely, for sure. Lady Steel, you shout to her. She asks, "What do you, th- yeah? What do you think are our strengths and weaknesses? How do we improve?" Mm. Well, let's start with the strengths. The strengths are definitely the pass rush. I think that's our biggest strength. Definitely the pass rush. The rushing defense is tremendous. The, the rotate or not the rotation. Um, the the core wide receivers is great. Mm-hmm. Even the rushing offense well, when, when they can catch and stay healthy, of mm. course. And the r- rushing offense, believe it or not, it's actually being very good. It really is. I'm when, hoping when, that, when, that can be consistent. Yeah, when used in a in a consistent way, when the offense is balanced. Yes. And of course, the offensive line compared to week one is definitely looking like a good great strength to us. Mm-hmm. And weaknesses, I honestly say for the offense is definitely the turnovers. The turnovers, slight play calling. Defense, of course, to secondary. Hopefully they can get their stuff going. And penalties. And get, get their communications. And, of course, penalties. And third down conversions. And giving up big plays in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. So Absolutely. So minor stuff we can easily fix. Discipline, play calling, communication, stuff like that we can easily improve. We are in a bye week, but hopefully we do improve in that very shortly. And then we can start seeing a legit, uh, frightening Pittsburgh Steelers team. Oh, yeah. So... Rob Gray, yeah, Rob Gray asks, what will happen in our schedule because we can't only play 15 games and the rest get 16? Well, we are going to play 13 straight games now. This is our official bye week. We are mm-hmm. going to be playing 13 straight games, which pisses me off. But like Tomlin said, we don't care. You know what? I like that mentality. Yes, I do. But what I don't understand is people saying, well, uh, week four is usually a uh, uh, – a common bye week for people. This wasn't scheduled for us. We no. didn't prepare for this. We used half of our bye week practicing, only for us to find out that the game is postponed to a completely different fucking week because their team fucked up. That's what pisses me off. And the NFL didn't have a plan and set. And well, they yeah, used the yeah. bye week excuse. Mm-hmm. What are you going to use when this happens again? Exactly. You can't use the bye week excuse again because you already used that fucking thing. You lazy fucking piece of shit. Exactly. Really? The bye week? If you're at, Are you serious? Yeah. You can't add a fucking week. I'm going on a rant here. I'm getting pissed off right now. 
you can't add an additional week at the end of the season for all those games that are affected and push the playoffs back. That way no teams get fucked over, no bye weeks are used, and there's no rescheduling for a lot of bullshit. There's there's not much headache there. But you go with the bye week excuse. What are you going to use next time? Never had a plan and set. Of course not, man. If you ask us, we have every right to be frustrated. We practice for nothing. It's bullshit. Seriously. The NFL should have been better. Seriously. William Sherman asked five questions. These are going to be interesting here. Favorite drafted player of all time? Uh, Well, Heinz Ward was drafted, so I have to say him. And Troy Palomalu was drafted, so I have to say him. Yeah. Favorite undrafted free agent player of all time? Of course, meaning the player went undrafted and then... They made the made roster, roster, obviously. Um, James Harrison from Kent State. Yes, I believe Kent State. Yeah, yeah, definitely James Harrison. Coming on drafted, you know, very small for, for an edge rusher, and but, he fucking blasted. But working his way up from cuts and and then Joey Porter being benched out one game, and then him just taking his spot. So, oh yeah, favorite free agent pickup of all time, uh, James Ferrier. Ferrier was definitely a great pickup, but he but Joe underrated Hay- pickup definitely. Jo- Joe Hayden's climbing that ladder, but J- James Ferrier was was a, a beast in the middle. He was a force to be reckoned with, man. Yeah, biggest draft bust. Uh, Jarvis Jones. To me, it's Jarvis Jones. I'm I'm sorry for what you did in college, and you can't even do half that in the NFL. I'm sorry, you suck. You were drafted. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm about. I'm going to say it. You were drafted. To replace James Harrison, who I believe was going to retire or already retired. He did retire. He came out of retirement because of the lack of depth. We had a linebacker. Yeah. And he, who retired, replaced you, who was supposed to replace said man who retired. That's sad. And the dude was like 10 years older than him, I think. I'm sorry. If that ever... If anyone ever surpasses Jarvis Jones, then they got to be on some sort of realm of garbage. Yeah. Jarvis Jones sucked. That was horrible. He didn't even do a third of his production in the NFL. And look where he is now. After he left Pittsburgh, he went to the Cardinals to even make the roster. Of course he went to the Cardinals. That's the Steelers' graveyard. It is. We just hear all night and tell you who was a former Steeler and went to the Cardinals. So many fucking players. Holy shit. (laughs) <laughs> Biggest free agent bust is his final question. Uh, Dante Moncrief. You know what? I have to that agree. That boy sucked. <laughs> Couldn't catch the coronavirus if he tried. If he didn't go through protocols. Don- if he didn't wear a mask. If he didn't wash his hands. Dante Concrete hands. Oh, God. That dude sucked. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Brandon Keene asks... It- uh, actually, he says this. If after all this, those infected bastards beat us, cancel fucking Christmas. I agree. If those infected bastards over there in Tennessee beat us after all this fucking bullshit, I agree. Cancel Christmas. And I love Christmas. I am a sucker for Christmas. Seriously, can you imagine if we were to lose to them? I hope not. So you're telling me now, now they get a chance to be completely fully healthy? I guess. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, and the Ravens get a bye week before we have to face them after we just came off the road against Tennessee in Week 7 just to go back on the road to Baltimore in their house. It's going to be tough. I, just saying, I don't go- know how it's fair to us. I'm just saying. It's, it's not, but, you know, we've went through adversity before and shoved up its ass. Yes, we have. We're known for that. Of course. We're the underdogs. Yes. Rowett Perswani asks, What are your opinions on Steven Nelson? He is struggling to cover people. Minka is not playing like last year. Our defense is playing good, but if these guys start playing elite like last year, we will be a monster team. I agree. A thousand percent. I definitely agree. I don't know what's up with Steven Nelson. Um, I, last year he allowed no touchdowns. I think he's already allowed two already. Yeah, he's I don't know, he's retracting bad. I don't know what's going on. I'm I'm hoping it's just a communication issue. And that's something that can easily be fixed yeah, within this specific bye week. It's still rust that he's, you know, wiping off and everything, you know. I, I hope that's just the case. Because yeah. I would hate to see him just fail. Yeah, because he, be he was bad. a hell of a acquisition Last for year, the Steelers. Yeah. You know, I'm hoping he can get back on track. And uh, Minka, I mean... He's just not getting targeted. Of course not. That's the thing. He's not getting targeted. So, uh, of course he's not going to do stuff he did last year because no one's going to... Attempt or or or, or going to test those waters. Yeah, and even think after the Rams game, 
He was targeted, what, 10 times overall? Something like that? Something low. Something like that? No one wants to test those waters, and I can't blame them. It's Minka Fitzpatrick. That's the Minka effect, man. That's the Minka effect. Yeah, production-wise, he's very quiet, but you know what? I prefer him to be locked down. Yeah. If he's not making, you know, production, at least be locked down. Right. That's all I can ask for. I say give Minka some time because in the Texans game, in the second half, where we shut down Watson and the entire Texans offense, Minka was being moved around, which limited Watson's options. Oh, yeah. So... If we keep him around like that, he's definitely going to find some plays. Exactly. He's definitely going to make some plays. And make his express he wants to move around, help the defense out, shut down the defense a little more, make some plays on the field. That's where he's going to benefit. That's where we benefit as well. So give it time. It def- his time will come. I know I know. we're so used to not seeing plays from the secondary. And when we see plays from the secondary, specifically Minka, we get excited. But when he's not making plays, we get worried. But he's not. it's because he's not getting targeted. Yeah. So just give it some time. Of course. Abel Zahid, I think I pronounced that correctly. How did you guys become Steelers fans, and what is the greatest game you can remember watching? Uh, the influence of our family is why we became, or specifically specifically our siblings is why we became Steelers fans. Uh-huh. Our parents are both Cowboys fans. Yes, believe, believe it or not. I, we don't know how the Steelers came about in our family. We really don't. But we're glad it did. Yes. And we the the influence of our, of most of our siblings, not all of our siblings are Steelers fans, but most of our siblings really uh, helped us become Steelers fans. Yeah, and we never looked back, man. We as, never regretted it. As for the greatest game, Super Bowl forty three. I know that's cliche, but man, that was a phenomenal game. Oh, it's just so many great moments and plays, and so just just unbelievable. Dude, I can watch that any day, all day, every day. Mm-hmm. That's great. I have to. Such agree. a great game, man. Seriously, Kawhi Junior. I've been a Steelers fan. Since I was nine years old, I stay in Detroit. Never like Surrey Lions, Pistons, and Tigers. I don't blame you. Uh, okay, okay. My question is: What city y'all in, and how long y'all been a Steelers fan? I love Steelers for life. Steelers Nation. Uh, we've been a Steelers fan for I want to say about see it's twenty twenty now. 13, 14 years. Yeah, going about fifteen years. You know, wow. I want to say about. 2005, that's when we really started to, you know, when we were young, start to know about sports and get into sports. And the first team that we saw play was the Steelers, and we just got hooked up on it. And, again, the influence of our siblings. Yes. Uh, what city do we live in? Well, we live in Pennsylvania. We live about three, three and a half, maybe four hours away from Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. We live in central Pennsylvania specifically. Yeah. So, Gary Lavelle asked, uh, what do you think – Oh, I'm sorry. Who do you think would make the Pro Bowl for the Steelers this year? We're going to go with the obvious. T.J. Watt. Watt. Bud Dupree should definitely make his first Pro Bowl. Cameron Hayward. Uh, maybe make a Fitzpatrick. I don't even say maybe. Yes, he will. Uh, maybe Ben. Possibly mm-hmm. Juju if he keeps it up. Right. Maybe the Castro gets another nod at the Pro Bowl. Possibly so. Pouncey if he does play a little bit better. Yes. Um... That's just the obvious, really. Yeah, it's, it's just the quite obvious. It might be a little too early to tell, but definitely the obvious that are, I'd say, locks already are TJ and Bud and Hayward and eventually Minka. Right. For sure. That defense, man. It's yeah. just insane. Yeah. And I think we're going to close it out here with Will Lachlan. He asks, what Steelers jersey do you not have but you really want? Also, do you collect Steelers trading cards? I'm really into card collecting. I have a pretty solid Steelers collection. Yes, we are into card collecting, uh, specifically Steelers collection. Um, I forget exactly what cards I have, what brand, or who specifically I have. I gotta dig deep into my uh, 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 closet and, and find the, the the collection. Yeah, um, I've kind of lacked on the card collecting, but now I'm starting to get back into it j- j- just for you know just uh, fun. Yeah, of course. I actually have like a. A football card binder, and the cover is actually, like, football, you know, material and, like, a cover to it. And it's just filled with Steelers uh, football cards. So many Steelers legends and current Steelers. I can name them all, but I'm not because you guys, you know, we'll sit here all night. But right. I actually have two autograph cards in my possession. It's actually when we went to Latrobe with our brother-in-law when he took us there. Um, I actually got a Bud Dupree autograph card and a James Conner autograph card. So I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it really is. So yeah, man. And is the uh, like you said, what Steelers jersey do you not have but really want? Like I said, Cam Hayward, a home, 
Ben. Now, uh, like a specific jersey, like like a Bumblebee. Like I've always wanted a Bumblebee. I finally got that with Brett Kiesel. Yeah. Uh, I don't know because we got the twelve back. We got the color rush. Uh, m- maybe that one of those uh jerseys that that the that they came out with last year. The Steelers never wore, but it was like a s- special type of jersey. I think it first came out with Connor. It was like a it was like a like a like like a gold. I f- I, f- I exactly forget. Well, I forget what exactly the name of it is or what mm. it lo- uh is entire what it entirely looks like, but maybe something like that. Uh, maybe if they come out with one of those really, really, really vintage old Steelers throwbacks, like the all white or the the ones with the I think it was the black up top and then the gold on the bottom. Yeah, wasn't it like a like, diamond thing? Kind of like top, a something yeah, like kind of like a Batman or something. I I forget exactly what it's called, but something like that. If they ever came out with those, man, I'd love to buy one of those. Oh yeah, those are very, those are vintage, man. Real vintage, man. Real old school. Oh uh, yeah, absolutely. So yeah, man. But that is uh the answering your questions part one, man. Part two will be coming out. Very shortly, man. Um, I want to thank you guys for all your questions for part one, man. Again, part two will be out very shortly. Can't wait to answer more of you guys' questions. I am out of Fanta, so. Well, now he is. Yeah, now I am. So, but it was great answering you guys' questions for part one. Part two coming up shortly. See you guys then, man. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later. Peace!